Good morning, church. We are um, excited to start a new worship series this morning. It has a very simple title, Drawn In. And what it's essentially asking us to do or allowing us to do is to be drawn into this world that God created in our own creative ways. Through imagining, through dreaming, through loving, and, and through creating. It, um, it gives us that freedom. It allows us that freedom for loving and for joy. And as the priest team is going gonna, is gonna to help us kick that off with, with a song called Canons that talks about the, the, the incredibleness of the universe and the God who created the universe. And I hope that you feel as drawn in as I'm already feeling for this, for this service of worship and for the series that runs over the next six weeks. Let yourselves be drawn in. Many of you know it's one of our staples, but it talks about 
it talks about rainbows and lightning and, and heaven's mercy and all of the greatest parts of this creation that we're being invited to be a part of and to be drawn into. So join us at an appropriate spot and, and sing with us in Revelation song. Yeah. 
Amen to that. I have to admit, that is one of my most favorite songs. So thank you, Stephen. God works Amen. in mysterious ways. Amen. So good morning and welcome to St. John's United Methodist Church in Dover, New Hampshire. My name is Larry Holman and I am the lay leader here at St. John's and I'm delighted to be serving alongside all the people of this congregation where we strive to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in this world. I'm really glad you've joined us for worship this morning. And for those of you who are here or who are joining us from home and may not have a church home, we invite you to please consider making St. John's your church home. And feel free to call or speak or email us if you are interested in finding out any more about our church. Let us be in the spirit of worship together. Join us in the call to worship. The words will be on the screen. It's a sung call to worship. And despite what's in your bulletin, where the words also appear, it's not call and response. It's everybody is going to sing, and we're going to be drawn in to this new experience. In the world of the driven, let us be drawn in. Let your love be a given, let us be drawn in. To imagine, to dream, to create, to redeem. For the sake of the living, let us be drawn in. All creation began with the dream of God the will and intention for life to exist in the void. All of our actions are born out of desire, out of a dream and vision for the future. This is our birthright, to imagine and to create. What brings you alive? What truly moves your soul in the deepest way? What you create of that answer is your greatest gift to the world and the way in which you are a part of God's unfolding and ongoing creative dream. driven let us be drawn in let your love be a given let us be drawn in to imagine to dream to create to redeem for the sake of the living let us be drawn in Let us pray together. Creating God, you call forth all that exists in a moment of divine brilliance. Open us again to that spark which you ignited in each of us at our creation so that we might generate more life-giving energy in this world. Draw us into the, your story of hope. Give us the courage to dream. Amen. Please stand if you are comfortable doing so and join in singing our hymn of praise, number 150 in the purple hymnal, God Who Stretched the Spangled Heavens. The words will also be on the screen.
Today's scripture reading is from Luke 4, 13 through 21. Let us listen for the word of our God. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. Then Jesus, in the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding region. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he said to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So while the choir is gathering, one of the things that um, one of the things that we're being invited to draw in, be drawn into is joy. I guarantee you, there's going to be some joy in this congregation today. I also want to um, let you know that we have a have a guest um, trumpet, uh, Randy Zielinski. Thank you so much. Glad you could be with us and uh, have some joy.
I'm just sweating watching all these people work so hard. <clears throat> so as Steve mentioned at the beginning, this is the start of a six-week series focused on being drawn in towards a creative life with God. Not drawn in like being photoshopped into a picture, but rather it's more about understanding how our beliefs, desires, and our God-given gifts and passions lead us to action. To better understand what truly moves our soul. To better understand the spiritual gifts that God gave each of us. To better understand how we can use the God-given power of imagination and creation to be a part of God's unfolding, ever-evolving creative dream so that together we can make the world a better place. God was the first big dreamer, for it was God who brought everything into being. It was through God's desire and creative nature that the universe and everything in it was made. But it didn't happen all at once. Like the realization of any big dream, even the creation story was gen in Genesis was done in small steps. Each step had a goal and a purpose, and God paused after each step to make sure everything was going according to plan before continuing. This is recorded multiple times in scripture as God stepping back to see that this was good. I think that we'd all agree that God is quite the artist, amen? amen. But it doesn't stop there. God gave each of us the gift of imagination, desire, and creation, each to their own passion. All of us are artists of some kind. So what is an artist? An artist is someone who creates something new and expresses themselves through their creation. An artist may have many of the following traits. Patience, willing to wait for the right moment for something they need to accomplish their goal. A sense of adventure, willing to try something new or to take a risk. Discipline and commitment, willing to follow guidelines or establish practices and to see things through to completion. Persistence, willing to work through setbacks to reach a goal. Passion, a strong desire to know more, do more, and share with others about a particular topic or subject. And big picture thinking, but also with an eye for detail. God was all of these things and more. God had a vision a big picture of you, and with a sense of adventure, created the universe. But God also has such an eye for detail that he even knows the number of hairs on our heads. God has patience and was willing to build creation step by step to make sure everything was right before moving on. God has the persistence to allow mankind to continue in existence, even though we continue to fall short. And God has such a strong passion and love for us that he created and sent his only son, Jesus, to be our redeemer, our savior, and our teacher. And the good news, God isn't finished. God continues to create new things, new dreamers, and to draw us in today. In Exodus 35 and 36, Moses had been given a commandment by God to build the congregation tent, which was believed to be the earthly 
dwelling place of Yahweh. And Moses called upon the people to use their God-given gifts to help wherever they could. This scripture mentions multiple times how people willingly gave their time, talent, and gifts, each depending on their own skills or treasure that they had to build the congregation tent. Their love of God had drawn them in to help wherever they could in order to bring God's dream to life. In another more contemporary example of creativity and dreaming in action, we have the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. In his famous, I have a dream speech, he called out the country for its long overdue response to racial injustice. Yet, he called upon those fighting for equal rights to do so peacefully, even if they had suffered from persecution themselves. He understood very well the racial tensions rising in the nation and the groups responsible for those tensions. But Martin Luther King spoke of his dream and God's dream that one day, maybe not today or tomorrow, but one day, all of God's children, regardless of color or faith, would live together in peace, for we are all created equal. Now, you might think that you aren't a leader or that your dreams aren't special or significant. You may think that you don't have a good imagination or any good ideas. Well, I tell you now that God gave each of us different gifts. Gifts that will help someone else's life be better and perhaps draw them in a little closer to Christ. St. John's is blessed to have so many talented and dream-filled people. We have people who had a dream to end children going hungry over the weekend and started in 68 hours of hunger. We have people who had a dream of sharing a meal, music, and fellowship with those in need and started Bread of Life. We have people who have dreamed up programs to make meals, quilts, assist with household repairs, cuddle the babies of mothers in recovery so that those mothers can work on rebuilding their lives, and many, many more dreams that have been turned into reality. The challenge for us is to discover and understand our gifts to find opportunities to grow spiritually and personally, and be creative in finding new ways to engage and energize each other in our St. John's community, as well as engaging with the people and organizations in the community to help spread the word and love of God. Why is this so important? The answer is simple. The world is constantly changing, and people are changing as well. We, the church, have to be creative and responsive in order to draw people in to Christ. We need to share our testimony, our time, and our talents so we can demonstrate the transformational power of God's love. So how does dreaming, using our imagination and our gifts relate to the scripture we heard this morning? To me, it's about making the scripture personal. To try and imagine yourself as the people or the person in the story. 
In today's scripture, Jesus, having fought off Satan's temptations in the wilderness and was now filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, is attending worship back in his hometown of Nazareth. And after Jesus reads the scriptures from the scroll of Isaiah, he announces that the scripture is now fulfilled. Side note, that announcement left people in the synagogue really perplexed and angry, as many had known Jesus since he was a little boy, and they really didn't think of him as a savior. In fact, following worship, they tried to drive him off the edge of a cliff. The point, though, is that Jesus acknowledged that with the power of the Holy Spirit, great things would be accomplished through him. This drew me in and confirmed just how powerful we can be when we put our faith into action and bring our dreams and God's dreams to life. Let me read part of today's scripture again with a slight modification. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you, for he has appointed you to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent you to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. The scripture you've just heard has been fulfilled this very day. So when we leave here today, let's remember to be mindful and be present in every moment of the day. For there is where we will see what work needs to be done. And when we take time for prayer, after we have finished our side of the prayer, remember to leave time to be still and listen for God's response. For it's usually the quiet time that allows us to see things in new ways and to come up with creative new ways to solve problems. May we all be excited, filled with the Holy Spirit, and get our creative juices flowing so that we can dream new dreams. Share our gifts, share the good word, and find new ways to bring this scripture and God's kingdom on earth to life. Amen. Please stand now if you are comfortable doing so and join in the hymn of response, God of great and small. The words will be on the screen.
Let us be in the spirit of prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Loving God, often we feel overburdened, defeated, and frustrated by the burdens in our own life, compounded by all the problems of war, violence, and the many forms of social injustice in the world today. We feel inadequate or that we don't have much to offer. Help us to feel your love and to know that we are empowered by your Holy Spirit, that we do dream your dreams, and that we forever are loved by you no matter what. Lord, we also come to you with our prayers and our concerns this day and our joys. Today we lift our concerns for the family of a deceased scout and all that were affected by an accident that occurred Friday afternoon. Lord, we pray for Bill who have will have a cardiac catheterization on Tuesday. We pray for nephew James, who has autism and is experiencing some additional problems. Lord, we pray for Michael Curtis, who is in ICU on life support for a sudden illness. Lord, we lift up Peg Berry, who will be having tests which hopefully will not show the need for surgery performed on that area. With Patty, we lift up Jacob, who is having difficulty swallowing. Considering the feeding tube as muscular dystrophy progresses, Lord, hold him close. And with Minette, we ask for prayers for a successful shoulder replacement on Thursday. And Lord, from those who come to our bread of life, we ask prayers for Mary Haworth, who had a massive stroke and is near her time of passing. Lord, comfort her and be with her. We lift up Carol Cavanaugh, who is having a PET scan because her cancer is back. We lift up Deb Libby, who is in Maine Medical, who had a heart attack. And we lift up John's brother, George Forrest Jr., who passed away on June 20th. And for joyous, dear Lord, we give you thanks for the rain that helps keep our grass green and delivers us from the drought that we've had in past years. And Lord, we give thanks with Jim for his wedding anniversary that was yesterday. Lord, we lift these joys and concerns to you so that you may be with these people and their families. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. There are so many ways to show our, our gratitude to God. For those of us here in the sanctuary, I invite us to leave our offerings in the box in the back of the church. 
And for those joining from home, I invite you to visit our church website, stjohnsdover.org, and there you will find ways to support our ministries by giving financially through our giving link or by getting involved personally. So I now invite you to stand if you are comfortable doing so and join in our closing hymn, Loving Spirit. The words will be on the screen. prepare to leave, may you see the unfolding of each day as an opportunity to be a co-creator with God. As a Jesus follower, may you feel his company leading you toward creating more kindness and mercy and justice. May you know the nudge of the creative spirit within, making belief in all you are and do. So go into the world, be in peace, and be creative. Amen. Amen.